So today we're starting on making a dress from this issue and it's this dress there it's down number 109 with the flounce okay and i've got all of my pattern pieces traced out and it's going to be cut out of this silk it's a silk fabric so it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out so i'm just about to lay out the fabric now and i've got my pattern pieces traced out with a half an inch seam allowance ready to be cut out got my fiskers which i've just sharpened got my pins and my little magnetic pin board let's get cutting people I just wanted to point out that on your center front pattern piece you want to notch the center bit where it's at the fold so that it's easy for you to match it up with the flounce and you also want to notch the center the center front fold on your flounces so that when it comes to attaching them you've got those points easily available for you to attach them number one and then number two, because my fabric is a lightweight silk, I'm going to block fuse this piece of fabric and then I will cut out the front armhole facing, back armhole facing, and the neckline facings from a fused piece of fabric already. So let's go fuse some silk. So just to be on the safe side, I've done a test fusing so I've decided to use a woven fusible interfacing this is a medium weight interfacing and I just wanted to check if it wouldn't be too heavy and I feel like it's quite all right so you can see it's giving it the structure and the stability so this is my fabric with the woven interfacing you can see how it sort of holds up a bit more it's got a bit more structure now and this is it without any interfacing. See how it completely folds down. And then you've got that. Okay, and so that's what you're looking for. So we're gonna go and do block fusing now. So in order to be as economical as possible, what I do is I cut out the minimum amount of fusing needed to cover all of the pieces that are going to need the interfacing so I've got that making sure that my largest piece is included and this one has to be cut on the fold okay so I know that if I have a piece of block fused fabric that's from here to there that's going to be enough for these pieces so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to fuse it over to my silk fabric here. OK, 
Okay, so now I've got my fabric and my interfacing ready to block fuse. So this is going to take a while um, because in case you didn't know, in order to fuse properly, you take your warm iron and then you press it down and count um, the number of seconds that are required. So for my case, it's between 10 and 12 seconds to let it fuse properly. So probably have another five seconds to go. Okay. And then lift, move, down again. So none of that whole, you know, pressing around as if you're ironing. You're not ironing the interfacing on here. You're fusing it, which means you go not like that. That's not good, especially if you're working with a lightweight fabric. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about block interfacing. Okay, so this is more of a technique that is used in industry than in home sewing. And that's because in home sewing, it actually works out more expensive. And you'll see that when I show you after I've cut it out, that you do lose amount of an amount of fabric that has been fused to interfacing which if you were just doing it on a pattern piece by pattern piece basis you wouldn't lose as much but in industry when they are cutting out hundreds of thousands of the same garment they are actually able to do it in such a way that it saves them more money to block fuse so they will block fuse hundred you know like meters and meters at a time and they will be cutting out loads of it at a time um so it's really quite fascinating but in home sewing there are times that are called for that call for block fusing and for me it's because my beautiful fabric is a silk is quite slippery it shifts a fair bit it's okay for the bigger pattern pieces that I've already cut out I could get away with those but when we're talking about smaller pattern pieces like this there's gonna be a lot of distortion um, as I try and cut them out so I must block fuse it but equally the type of interfacing that you use is just as important so I could have used the cheaper um, polyester, non-cotton, non-woven interfacing. I don't know what they make it with, but it's a synthetic one. And it's the one that you can see these little um, drops of the glue. Whereas this one's like a, it is cotton, which just has the, the glue put on one side. And so it's called a woven one. It's a little bit more expensive than the other one but it is much better quality it really is um, and i've so slowly been shifting over towards the woven interfacing um, i haven't been buying any more of the other type now i used to buy that when i started sewing but once i used the cotton the woven interfacing for the first time on the recommendation of somebody i you know, I was just like, okay, so this is good stuff, but I'm just working through all of the older stuff that I had. But when I buy new interfacing now, I buy the woven interfacing because it is so much better quality. There's less bubbling and there's less chances of overfusing. And yes, that does happen. If your iron is too hot or you leave it on there for too long, you overfuse and that creates this crinkly, unpleasant look sometimes. Problems that you get with fusing, like say, for example, bubbling or delamination where the fusing comes away are caused by using too high a temperature. So when it comes to interfacing and fusing, your interfacing to your fabric, the general best rule of thumb to follow is start off with low. Lower is better because you can always increase your temperature gradually to get it to the right point. Like I said before, if your iron is too hot, you can get strike through, which is when the glue melts so much, it gets so hot, it goes through the woven bits of, um, you know, because cloth is woven thread 
and if the glue gets liquid enough it will go through and then it will show up on your actual fabric which it shouldn't do but you can avoid that by starting at a lower temperature okay and also it does help to get good quality interfacing obviously because if you're going to invest the time effort and money it takes to actually sew a garment you kind of want to try and prevent these silly errors from happening okay so i am nearly done with this so we're going to move on to the next stage which is actually cutting out the interfaced bits so i just realized that there's another question that you might have about interfacing and fusing is whether you can use steam now i don't know what the official recommendation is from the actual manufacturers but i can tell you that i have used steam when I'm fusing with no problem and I have not used steam when I've run out of um, water in my iron tank and that's been fine as well so I not sure what the recommendation is like I said however I've done both and I do both most of the time and it's fine and then another point that I wanted to make was that you need to let your interfaced piece condition, which means that you don't lift it up straight away and cut into it or you start sewing it after you fuse it. You need to leave it for, I think, 15 minutes at a minimum. An hour is probably best because you want all of that heat to come off and you want the glue to set back again because you've effectively melted the glue and then the glue has to get hard again, bonding your interfacing to your cloth. So I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but just after you've interfaced something and you lift it up, it sort of curves. And if you lay it on something that's curved, it will hold that shape when you lift it up somewhat. So when you leave it on your ironing board and you leave it flat, you make sure that it conditions and the glue sets in that nice flat position which makes it easier for ironing so don't forget to condition your interfaced piece of fabric so i'm going to leave mine to condition for a bit and then we will pick up from that point okay so this is conditioned now as you can see there's the black there from the interfacing and then you've got the so it no longer has the drape it's got the structure so again, compare, so uninterfaced, drapey, floaty, and this is interfaced. So we've got more, more structure on it. Okay, so we're ready to get cutting. Okay, so this is what block fusing looks like. So all of this is interfaced and then I just put in the pattern pieces that I want to cut out so I just wanted to point out how for home sewing you can see why this isn't normally recommended because it is quite wasteful um, you know I've got all of these bits that are aren't really going to be usable <laughs> for anything else I don't have more of this fabric to actually make some more of these things but it was necessary because of the nature of the fabric that I'm working with and I'm working with 100% silk so I'm going to try and use only the best for it and use the best techniques that I can for it so that included the block fusing and actually using the woven interfacing so another point to note about the woven interfacing is it does have a green line so I had to make sure that I'm following the green line there Okay, so we're going to go and cut. I don't use a rotary board. I'm using my trusty Fiskars dressmaking scissors. And I'll have my fused pattern pieces for the front um, armhole facing, back armhole facing, and the neck facing pieces cut out. I've collected the notions that I need. I need an invisible zipper for the back. I've got my black polyester thread and I've got all of the pattern pieces cut out. I just have to do one more thing before I start sewing, which is to mark the darts. If you remember, this pattern has got um, back uh, shoulder darts and it's also got front bust darts. So I just need to mark those and then those will be the first to get sewn up. 
So for marking my dots, I use friction pens. And what I'll do is I'll just flip this up and I will put a dot right at this point where the pin goes in and I'll do the same on the other side and then I'll pin it up immediately before the dot fades. I can't do this and hold my phone at the same time so I'll just show you when I'm done. <laughs> so it's very very subtle but you can see there it is right there. And that corresponds with this here. Okay, so I've pinned off all four of my dots, the two neckline dots and the two busters. And then the next stage is to get sewing. But before I do that, I have to set up my sewing machine, check the tension, test um, the tension on a scrap piece of fabric before I then get get on with it. I've tested my sewing on a scrap um, piece of fabric. I've had to change the needle to a Sharps um, 60 size needle, which worked really nicely. I've had to reduce the tension to three. For this uh, project, I'm actually using my brother's 662 uh, sewing machine, and I've got it set onto the silk um, and the silk setting for the feed dog. I'm using this one because I'm very familiar with how to do invisible zippers with this machine and this one's going to need an invisible zipper. So we're going to get started sewing and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to sew the four dots in the front and the back pieces and I'll be right back. So I've sewn in my dots. I've sewn them in now but before I go and press them down I'm going to stay stitch around the neckline here because this V point needs to be reinforced so I'm stay stitching all around that neckline and I'm also going to do the back neckline as well before I go and press. I like to maximize the amount of time that I have to sit and sew before I go and press. So off to stay stitching now. Neckline has been stay stitched now and I'm getting ready to press my dots I'm going to press the bust down, facing down, and we have our good old silk organza cloth, because this is silk, we kind of don't want to ruin it by putting the iron directly on it. I've got it set on a low setting, we've got some water in there for some steam, and we're going to go ahead and press those dots. Okay, our dots are beautifully flat now. I just wanted to point out that when I sew my dots in, I don't do that thing where you tie off the dots. I sew using my normal stitch length, in this case for this project is three. And then when I reach about a half an inch or three quarters of an inch from the end point, I reduce my stitch length my stitch length to about uh, two or one point five, so I make it really tiny, and then I finish it off with a really tiny stitch length. And I find that in all the time I've been using this as a technique, I have never had darts unravel for me, and so I don't have to waste time doing that fancy thing where you have to tie your darts. So. That's a little tip for you right there. The next step is to sew in the invisible zipper along the center back. But before you do that, you're going to finish your center back edges. I'm overlocking my edges, so you want to go ahead and do that first because I find it a lot easier to do that before you actually sew in your invisible zip. Okay, my center backs have been finished using black overlocker, four thread overlocker. I've got my zipper ready and I've got my machine ready with my invisible zipper foot. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the invisible zipper. I uh, can't hold my phone and actually sew it on at the same time. 
so I'll be back right after. We now have the invisible zipper in, so I've done both sides, that goes in, and I've gone ahead, finished that seam down there, and I've pressed it open. So hopefully you're at this point now, and we'll get ready for the next stage, which is going to be sewing up the shoulders on the dress as well as on the facings. So right up next we're going to stitch those shoulder seams together and we're going to finish them and then press them open. Another way you can do it if you want to is to finish the edges first then sew them down and then press them open but I prefer to um, finish them together after I've sewn them down. Right, shoulder seams have been sewn on. Before I go and finish these, I'm just going to sew up my neck fa facing. So I have to sew this to that there. And then I will do the pressing of the shoulder seams and of this shoulder facing seam in one go. For my facings, I normally prefer to use my pinking shears rather than using overlocking. So I use the pinking shears on the seams and then I'm going to overlock the edges here to knit in them. Okay, so for now, I'm going to go do the overlocking of these edges and the overlocking of these seams. At this stage, I like to add in my stamp, as I like to call it, my tag, Hila Willing Handmade. It's a lot easier to put it on when you haven't yet sewn it up. So I do it now. It's going to be off center because there's a center back seam, but that's okay. What matters is that one day when I'm dead and gown and my kids donate all of my handmade clothes, somebody's going to buy this. And then they're going to say, oh, it's Hila Willing Handmade. <laughs> This is always my favorite part of a sewing project when I get to put my stamp on it. So there. Okay, so next thing is to attach the neck facing to the neck of the dress. Okay, so now that the facing has been sewn on, we're going to go right ahead and we're going to understitch it. Like so. And that will make sure that you're only going to show this side of the fabric. So this is my favorite part now where I kind of feel like I've got a dress. The shoulder seams are done, the neckline has been done and I've just tried it on just to make sure that this isn't gaping away and I am very happy with my neckline. Okay so we're gonna move on to the next stage now which is working on those armholes so get your armhole facings ready mm -hmm. okay now ladies let's get information so just before we move on we just need to either hand sew this down here or do what i like to do which is you sort of turn this in on itself and you can use your sewing machine to sew as close as you can to the zipper and then you turn it out um, yeah I'm gonna go do that and then I'll show you what it looks like or a very simple way would just be to use your sewing uh, your sewing needle and just do some hand sewing on this side and on that side uh, this is the thing I was trying to explain you sort of uh, Turn it over, right sides together, sew as close to the zipper as you can. Let's see if I can do this one handed. You sort of. Hang on. And then you turn it over. Ta da! Ta da! I have to poke out this point and everything but 
that's one way of doing it or you can just do your hand sewing separately i am falling more and more in love with this fabric oh and it feels so delicious against my skin can't wait the final step for the neckline now is we're going to just tack the facing onto this shoulder seam here and that's just so that this doesn't continuously flap out then once we're done with that that is that okay so i wanted to point out that we've got this is the front armhole facing and this is the back armhole facing they kind of look relatively similar so this is why i've kept the pattern pieces pinned together so that i don't get confused plus also the way that we're going to be constructing these means that it's very important that we know where the shoulder seam is so when you look at your actual pattern pieces in the magazine it tells you that this bit here is number six and this is number six so that's how we know that these are the seams that we put together so you got to make sure you mark these so that you know now the numbers help you identify where the seam is but a little good pointer to do is to use your own notching so just give it a notch there and another notch here and then you know that these two are going to have to be sewn right sides together so we're going to go ahead and do that we're going to sew up those shoulder seams use the pinking shears press them open before we then sew them onto the armholes of the dress at this point we haven't yet done the side seams okay so remember that when you're tracing your pattern pieces you always need to copy those tiny little numbers that you see in the corners it's very important to take them down so we've sewn the front and the back facings together at the shoulder seam we've trimmed that allowance i've used my pinking shears and i've pressed it open now it's quite important for you to be able to remember which one is the front and which one is the back and the simplest way that you can do that is sort of get your pattern piece over so that you can see so this one the shorter one is the front one so i'm going to put an x okay i think you kind of get the idea so i'm going to put an x on there and i'll do the same for the other piece so i know that the x is the one that goes onto the front and then the next thing is we're going to attach it to the actual dress itself and remember to finish the edges the outer edges of your armhole facings before we go on to the next step so now we're going to spread out our dress and we're going to line up this shoulder seam with the shoulder seam on the dress okay so we haven't sewn up the side seams so we're going to do what we're going to do is we're going to sew the armhole facing along here and this is where it sort of is helpful to have marked that as your front so that you just know straight away that you're going to line it up like that that will go with the shoulder over there and then so just like we did with just like we did with the neckline we're going to sew that and then we're going to understitch it and then we'll do the side seam okay so i'm going to go off and do that and then we'll pick up after we've done the understitching so i actually forgot to stay stitch along the armhole on the dress side of things and because the armhole when you cut in a curve things get on the bias grain it did stretch out a bit as i was sewing it so yeah this is why you stay stitch on curves so that it doesn't stretch out but it should be fine you know i'm not going to let that stop me um <laughs> continuing with it here we are armhole facing sewn on and it's been understitched and we're just going to give it a very light pressing so that when we roll it under you've got this nice nice curve and then we will sew 
the side seams down. I will have a dress. At this point, this is what your dress should look like. And we're now going to put the side seams together, sew them, finish off your side seams. Now, my fabric is 100% silk and it's quite delicate. It doesn't like being handled. It is fraying quite badly. So I have to be very gentle with it. You could finish the side seam off now before you sew it if you wanted to. But I personally prefer to finish it in one go rather than do it separately. But you're nearly there now. You should be able to try it after the next stage. Um, or you could pin it together on the side seams and then try it on to see if you're happy with it or maybe you might want to take it in a bit more on the sides um, but that's up to you but you do have the opportunity to try it on now if you wanted to so these are my side seams sewn up you want to just make sure that you line up those armhole facings like that and we're just going to sew all the way down the bottom so this is what it would look like if you finished the side seams first and then you sewed them together and then you'd press the side seams open so it's up to you which way you want to do it um, you can finish the side seams first neaten them or you can neaten them after you've sewn them up just thought I'd show you both ways for the fun of it but, oh, loving that fabric so this is the armhole neatly sewn on and we now just have to tack it down onto this side seam so that it doesn't flap about and also tack it down on here onto this shoulder seam okay and now we're just going to attach the flounce but we're nearly there at this point you can actually try this on have a bit of a twirl have fun with it which i'm actually going to do right now Here's what we have so far. It's looking nice. Looking nice. So the next thing is I'm going to finish this edge here so that it doesn't fray too much. And then we're going to start working on the flounce. But yeah, we got a dress, people. Okay, now we move on to the flounce pattern pieces. Though they look similar, the back flounce is actually slightly bigger. Hello, there we go. It's actually slightly, just slightly bigger than the front flounce. So don't be tempted to use the same uh, pattern piece for that. You have to trace the two separate pattern pieces. Okay, so we're just going to simply stitch the side seams, right sides together, finish them, and then we're going to attach this seam the upper flounce seam to the dress itself and we're going to match the side seams and we're going to match the center seam here which we notched right so the flounce has been sewn on to the bottom of the dress now all i have to do is go finish this with the overlocker press it i'm going to finish the hem with an overlocker and then I'll do a tiny, teeny little baby hem. I'll show you that. So at this point now, we've got a lovely dress. Nearly there now. It's the home run. So for my hem, I'm doing a very simple hem whereby I've overlocked the hem using my overlocker. And then I'm just turning, <laughs> sorry, I'm just turning it under and stitching it. And you can see over here what it looks like. So it's a, tiny hem and it will give it a slightly fluted look once it's finished okay